welcome to this tutorial on what I'm calling sliding panels. Uh, it's a unique way of uh, using a rotation center in that the rotation center is going to move with the panels. This is the effect that I want to create. I want to create a panel that's, you know, it starts out the same size as the screen, but I uh, reduce the size and then convert it into four separate panels. Each of these panels is then going to rotate around the same point. I, or when I say rotate, in this particular case, it's like tilt. It's going to tilt in the same spot as if they were all one unit. They're going to change position, and when they change position, they're going to keep the same perspective as what they started with. Then I'm going to rotate it back. And the question becomes, how is this done? Well, what I'm going to do is provide that information. One of the first things we need to do is identify or create our uh, each of our panels. Now, I took the original panel and our original uh, layer and I reduced its size from 80 from 100% uh, down to 80%. Now, I'm going to break that up into four different panels. Each of them is going to be 20% wide. I'm actually going to set the zoom to 20.1% and then position them as if they're 20%. And the reason for that is that when I do it at 20, when I uh, set their position as if they're at 20% width, I'm forcing their uh, excess size to overlap. Each of the uh, panel's edges are going to overlap and take care of any partially transparent pixels which might be on the edge of each of those layers. So it'll be a uh, uh, a solid line instead of uh, partially transparent if you're using this layer as a mask or whatever. Now since each of these panels is going to use the same rotation center I need to figure out how to do that. The equation for that is that the rotation center is equal to the pan divided by the zoom of that layer. So I'm going to use Z for the zoom. Zoom is going to be 20.1 percent. However, there's a little caveat here. The decimal zoom is what I actually need to use, which is Z over 100, or 20.1 divided by 100, or 0 0.201. Uh, 0 0.201. Anyway, uh, so I also need to know the effective pan. Now, the effective pan of these. Uh, each of these layers is actually going to be the rotation point minus the actual pan. So the rotation point where I want each of the layers to uh, rotate on minus the pan is associated with that layer. Now, uh, what I want you to do is remember that each of these locations of pan is identified with the center of the layer. If you read my uh, uh, pro show discussions on my uh, blog at uh, fpvp.wordpress.com, uh, it'll explain uh, the, where pan or the value of pan comes from. But basically, pan is nothing more than an offset from the screen center. So this value of pan here is the width of this layer plus the half width of this layer. That's why I get minus 30. So it's 20 plus 10 equals 30. This one is minus 10. This one is a distance of 10. This one is plus 20 plus 10 equals 30. Now when I do my rotation center, which is going to be here, I need to find that effective pan. And the reason and the way I do that is minus 20, which is the distance here, plus minus 20, or minus 30. So that's minus 20, minus 30, or minus a minus 30, gives me a plus 10 over 0 0.201. Next one is this one. So it's minus 20, which is the rotation, which is the location of this uh, point, minus the minus 10, which gives me a minus 10 total divided by 0 0.201, which gives me minus 49.75. And then we do the same thing for the next two. So any 
panel that occupies this position is going to use the rotation center of 49.75. Likewise, any panel that or layer that occupies this position, minus 30, that's using this as a rotation center is going to have to use a rotation center of minus 248.76. Okay, with that in mind, let's get started. First off, I'm going to uh, cr create this blank slide, and I'm going to use this as my center point. This is where the rotation center is, and I'm using this graphic as a visual reminder of what the, where the rotation center of each layer is going to be. So let's create a solid layer. Let's set it to 80% zoom. Let's unlock the rotations or the uh, zooms for each of them and set the horizontal zoom to 20.1 percent and then let's position it to this uh, layer to minus 30. I'm going to need a rotation center which right now is located at the center of this layer to 49.75. Notice that this zoomed over here right quick. Now I'm going to copy this to the last keyframe make things a little easier for me. Now I'm going to save myself some work by uh, creating all the keyframes on this particular layer and then duplicating this layer for the three other sub subsequent layers that I'm going to need. So the next thing I'm going to do is add five keyframes. Let's rename this layer to panel A and let's move it below the rotation center icon or graphic. Okay, now I'm going to save, uh, I'm going to keep position, the same position, to keyframe 3, but from keyframe 3 to keyframe 4, I'm going to move to 30. And when I move to 30, I'm going to need a rotation center of minus 248.76. See the icon for the rotation center moved over to here. Let's go to keyframe 7 and I'm going to move it to 30 and I'm going to use the rotation center which you see right here the icon is right now at 49.75 for this layer I'm going to change it to minus 248.76 and you notice it jumped over here like it was supposed to. Now I'm going to rotate or tilt from layer 1 or from keyframe 1 to keyframe 2 so my tilt is going to be 45. And I'm going to keep that tilt until I get to keyframe 5. When I get to keyframe 6, I'm going to go to the 0. So now I have a keyframe, or I have a layer that tilts until it reaches keyframe 2. It's going to hold position for a sec. Then it's going to move. Notice it's changed, it, it stays the same perspective until it gets to keyframe 4. It's going to hold and from keyframe 5 it's going to rotate back to a horizontal position and that's it. So let's create another keyframe, let's, or another panel. Let's duplicate this layer. Let's rename it to panel D. Let's uh, change its color so we can keep from being confused and let's make it magenta or a form of magenta. Okay, let's start here. I'm going to start at, this one's going to be at layer th at position 30 and its rotation center is going to go from 49.75 to minus 248.76 and it's going to hold that to here, so minus 248.76 and it's supposed to be held at position 30. It's going to move from minus 30, or it's going to move from plus 30 to minus 30, and its rotation center is going to change from minus 248.76 to 49.75. And it's going to hold that for the rest of the time, so 49.75 and minus 30. So now they should both rotate as one unit, they're going to change position while maintaining perspective and they're going to rotate back horizontal or flat and that's it. So let's do that for 
the other two panels. So we'll duplicate this layer. We'll rename it to panel B. Let's redo the color. To blue. Let's see, zero, zero, set color. Okay, it's blue. Our position is going to be minus 10. Our rotation center is going to be minus 49.75, and it's going to maintain that. See, this is going to be 10 and minus 49.75. Excuse me, that's going to be minus 10, 49.75. But it's going to be 10 here, and it's going to be minus 149.25. And this last one is going to be minus 149.25, and it's going to be 10. Let's see if it works like it's supposed to. And it is. So let's duplicate panel B now. Duplicate layer. Let's rename it to C. Let's change its color to some sort of gold rod. Let's go back here. This is going to be 10. And at 10, my rotation center is going to be minus 149.5. Ten and then minus one forty nine point two five. The icon changed. Okay, now it's going to change positions to minus ten. And if that's the case, it's going to be minus forty nine point seven five for the rotation center. Minus forty nine point seven five and its position is minus 10. And as you see, that's what we were looking for to begin with. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.